Welcome to Old Play Roulette, a show where two old people get together and talk about old games that aren't necessarily in print anymore. Stuff that here on Role Play Roulette we can't really justify putting the time into doing a new review when there's new games coming out all the time we want to show right. you. We can't this, keep up. We can't, and this show's so. going to give us a chance to, you know, talk about stuff that, you know, us old grognards played when we were wee tiny babbies. So we are talking about... The old World of Darkness. Yeah, which I thought tied in uh, nicely since our retrospective video was on New World of Darkness and this Since season, our first episode was on New World yeah, of Darkness. Yeah, and our first so. episode and... Cause it's, that's especially a big thing right now because yeah. now we have Chronicles of Darkness exactly. and in addition to that, the entire you know property, World of Darkness, has been passed on to a new company who's going to bring Old World of Darkness back right. in a new way. World of Darkness was a sort of a blanket term applied, and the original, I mean, the original project was Vampire, and Werewolf, and Mage the Ascension, and yeah. all and those. The, and to look at this, like, this says World of Darkness. What you gotta look at is the differences, but the difference between the Old World of yeah, Darkness and, and the, the New, new world, world of Darkness. Darkness. The system underwent a lot of refinements. The Old World of Darkness system got a little confusing and a little gameable, and their merit system was yeah. a, was much less refined, much more abusable. Yeah, they they came along, um, they came bundled with the flaw system. Yeah, and that flaw system is one of the most abusable things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like the only, they wouldn't top themselves until they put out Demon the Fallen. Well, here's another one that's just oh. straight up World of Darkness. This book has World been of through... Darkness Combat. That is one of the most useless books that I've ever. It's like, would you like to make your combat more complicated? I used to have a player who used to. No. Uh, <laughs> one of, I used to have a player who one of his favorite arguments was, uh, okay, well, why this happens? Why on earth would this happen? Because that's the way the rules say in World of Darkness Combat when it's expanded. Hey, one of my favorite ones was my character was in handcuffs and I was like okay well I shift into Krynus form and break them. He's like well you can't do that because that'll destroy your hands. That's cool I'll still break the handcuffs and then I'll regenerate and I'll, I'm and a I'll you know regenerate because it's bashing damage. Like at best it's lethal damage. I'll be fine in a minute. And he's like well it doesn't heal like that because that is deep tendon damage which actually heals nor like slowly. No no it doesn't say that anywhere. He's like it says that in World of Darkness Combat. So I went out and I bought the book and I read it from cover to cover and found that absolutely every reference to World of Darkness combat he ever made was a lie. Not even just wrong, invented out of whole cloth. The complaint that I always had with the old World of Darkness, however, wasn't really the system because at the time the system was almost revolutionary. Yeah. Like we had never seen uh, a story-centric system quite it, like this. World of Darkness came out, like Vampire the Masquerade released and became super popular right as there was a you know there was a huge revolution from where the old school became the new school and the entire story paradigm became a big part of the role playing community the the issue that i, I that i have often had with world of dark the old world of darkness yeah. they had an overriding i'll call it a meta plot but it oh it yeah. also okay it also had this this interconnectivity. For example, vampire or werewolf or mage society was global. Yeah. Oh, it yeah, was that, global, the, and it, it, you couldn't you couldn't make a move in L.A. without an a Justicar in from uh, Bangladesh. Yeah, Bangladesh is good. Knowing about it and deciding to call a blood hunt on you. Mage was a great game. Euthanados. Euthanatus were awesome. Um, I was a Hermetic Order guy, but still, I was uh, I was actually into um, the um, the real old world, like Upper India area. Oh, like real Euthanatos. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, there was there were there was just some amazing stuff. Vampire and werewolf and mage because they're so iconic and they, they're just beloved games through the role playing yeah. community. But I feel like there were a couple of them in there that just didn't work for me. Mm, yeah, like some games... One of them was Wraith. Yeah, I was going to say, so the problem is is that some of these games did not mesh. They did not fit well, and it was almost impossible to incorporate them if somebody wanted to check that out, if somebody wanted to experiment exactly. with that. And that's a good example is Wraith. And I think the most tragic example of that Changeling. is Changeling the Dreaming, Changeling the which Dreaming was... was one of my absolute all-time favorite games in history, and on its own, it was great. But you could not 
bring a changeling into a mixed group intertwined with their stuff they couldn't couldn't even use their magic on their friends if they weren't enchanted in some way like the glamour system was so out there that's not even getting into the banality system where you know like heaven forfend you want to play a changeling and one of your friends want to play a a a vampire because you've got a (laughs) you're getting into a situation there where it's less a you got your peanut butter and my chocolate situation and more a you're stealing the metaphysical essence I need to exist. I mean, I, I consider Changeling the Lost, the New World of Darkness oh, thing. I consider better. it a quantum it's leap. Like Ch- Changeling um, the Dreaming is one of my all-time favorite games. Changeling the Lost is a unequivocal improvement. If for no reason other than it perfectly meshes with the rest of the World of Darkness and you can, if you play a mixed campaign... They fit perfectly in with your they party work. with no problems. Exactly. The meta narrative in Old World of Darkness was suffocating. Oh, now that's something we all actually actually I, I agree with you. That's and it like you know it's it's that. that kind of situation where I'm gonna uh, sort of quantum leap that that depressing aspect because that's something else that you'll notice as a law as a running thread through almost I think all all real pretty much all of the Old World of Darkness properties. All of the games, all of those games basically had an apocalypse built yeah. into their, their and background. They, they're, and even if like... An impending <sighs> Armageddon. Gehenna oh, yeah. is inevitable. Oh, and werewolf, Ravana. apocalypse, the, the rise of the worm, the failure of, and the death of Gaia. The literal apocalypse. The literal... Like the literal death of the world. Yeah. And Wraith it's, is so... You gotta watch that. Probably the worst form of it, because I'm like, I remember sitting there going over this, I'm just like, what, did Schopenhauer write this? It was bleak. Yeah, the, and that's not um, necessarily a bad thing. It just... No. By the end of Old World of Darkness, it had become so overwhelming and oppressive that yeah. it was kind of dragging the setting down. And it was, you and, know what, it, what uh, that was? It was a reflection of another time. It was very perfectly made from the perspective of, and to market to, a generation of people that had lost hope. You can't really understand Old World of Darkness without understanding 1984 to 1992. You saw it in movies like Night of the Wilding. Wow, there's a reference. Yeah. <laughs> Old World of Darkness definitely had a bleaker, Yeah, you're not going to win, or at it least was, you're not going to win for a long kind of motif to it. absolutely perfect for the massive gothic punk movement. It's one of those things where, I mean, you can see that sort of motif reflected in yeah, a lot of the, zi- like the cultural zeitgeist at the time. And it's got some inter- interesting interpretations got a of lot legends of and folklore and mythology. W- Old World of Darkness, they actually took a sort of an unprecedented step. Like, they, they sort of did a thing I have never seen a role-playing game company do. Oh, yeah, they killed a game. They killed a game. Just... And they just killed... They it, killed all of the they games. They took it out behind the shed and put a, you know, put a bullet um, in its head. And they basically said, you know, that looming impending apocalypse that yeah. we've been talking about? We're putting our money where we're They had is. it happen. They pulled the trigger. Yeah. And there were people that thought it was crazy. No, yeah, I mentioned that. Um, Game, their, uh, Games Workshop pulled White Wolf's product from all of their stores and said they're not going to shelve anymore because they said they were committing industry suicide. We could go on and on and on about World of Darkness because there is that much World of Darkness to go on and on and on about. I'll get out my uh, freaking spiked choker and put on a, a Sister of Mercy CD. Okay, tell tell him not to do that. I'll I'll go tell him buy not some, to do that. I'll go buy some <laughs> Nog Champa and get that. That's part of I think why we're doing old play roulette in a way because as the march of time continues, people are kind of missing it. You know, every generation has their own thing. Absolutely, and it's, I, it's sad that we I can't you know take other people and put them into the place, the space and time that made something magical. Yeah. But we can try to do that, and that's, I guess, kind of the point of this series. So we can you show wanna... you some stuff, so, or some obscure yeah. gems to maybe hunt down on eBay or whatever it is. Yeah. And at least know what you all could these, do a lot worse At least than know what all the these old people are talking about. Or, you know, sit down and listen to some other, some fellow old people whinge on about the old people things that these kids just don't get. Or get, get excited that the game that we want is coming back, because that company really sounds like what they want to do is bring back old World of Darkness, but just make it viable to the new market. Yeah. Just talking about some of these old World of Darkness properties. It makes me want to take a break to recite Howl by Allen Ginsberg. Ah.
because I'm all because I'm all young and edgy and totally have my eyes open to the monstrous garbage that is the corporate horror stop, of America. Stop trying to prove how hip you are, Fox. All you have to do is sit next to me to prove how hip you are. I what, what, you know, I need to break <laughs> so, out that, you know, we, hipper than me. It's part of gaming history and it's a cool part of gaming yeah, history. Yeah, if you want to talk about this card of um, gaming history, leave us a comment, talk, you know, hit us up on Facebook. Absolutely. Tweet me. I check the Twitter every um, few months. If contemplating the inevitable end of everything is getting you down to Remember, you can always just hit that subscribe button and we will distract you from the yawning void that is oncoming darkness of nothing. That's true. With newer silly videos about old role-playing games that we are going to just sit around when and the, chat about. Or when the worm inevitably new triumphs. That we'll be reviewing full reviews and full skits with new role-play roulettes coming right. out. You can listen to us chatter about nonsense and get mad as we play video games and Let's Play Roulette, which will be starting yeah. again probably next month. <laughs> Leave a like to, so. to delay the inexorable triumph of the worm. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>